What's up, Blood on the Razor Wire TV? Here's a little clip of New York State parole police officers arresting people, busting in a house, kids on parole. Hopefully he doesn't have a weapon in the house, because if he does, guess what? He'll probably be in federal court. Just another little clip, man, of what's going on in Rochester, New York. This is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods you could be in. It's flooded with fentanyl, flooded with crack. This is my neighborhood. This is the neighborhood that I had grew up in. But um, definitely not the place you want to be ever. You know what I mean? Um, this is uh, this is it, man. This is Rochester, New York. I'm going to take you through some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in this city today. I want you to see that. I want you to see what's going on. You know, this is uh, this is a street that I used to hang out on when I was just a little kid. And back then it was bad, but now it's just, it's getting worse, man. Every day is worse. Every day, people's lives are on the line every day over here. Um, definitely not a place you want to be. Definitely not a place you want to live. But this is my neighborhood. We're going to ride down Lyle Avenue, which is another very dangerous place, known for prostitution. You know, I'm not glorifying anything that I did in the past, but... This was the neighborhood that I sold drugs in. This was the neighborhood that I helped contaminate. Um, you know, you can see homeless people out here flying signs. And sometimes you ask, man, why are these people homeless? They're homeless because they allow their drug addiction, they allow their drug addiction to overcome their intelligence, man. They allow their drug addiction to become the thing that dictates their lives. So definitely don't want to live a life like this we got a pastor out here who's always out here he's out here on the street with a, with a sign and trying to stop the violence trying to stop the um drug prostitution this is it man this is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods you can be in in rochester new york the west side sometimes people hear me talk about my neighborhood ghost town right when i say i'm from ghost town this is this is the area that is Ghost Town. J Street, Smith Street, Saxton Street. Right here used to be an old department store when I was a kid. We used to come here and go shopping for clothes, all that type of stuff. But definitely, man, Rochester, New York will leave you as a, you know, just a statistic out here. You guys seen the kid just now get arrested on parole. And you know what the crazy thing is about that is you know, they ran up in that house. So them running up in that house, it's possible, man, he's got some drugs in there. It's possible he's got a gun in there. So instead of just having a parole violation, he might be heading over to the federal building. You know, his destiny might be the federal building and now a federal prison. I'm very hopeful that that doesn't happen to him. But all things are possible, right? All things are possible out here in the streets, man. I'm gonna show you guys what Lyle Avenue looks like, man. Just a straight run. This is what the, uh, this was, this used to be called the prostitution run right here. This is where all the prostitutes were at. This is where they would catch what, you know, what we would call licks. These are, you know, some people would say, man, that the people out here are the undesirables, so to speak. Definitely not a, um, a place that I like to frequent, but I have to because my family lives in this neighborhood still. My mother's been here 50 years. She won't leave. She don't want to leave. Um, recently, right here at this gas station, somebody was murdered. You know, people get killed over here all the time, unfortunately. Sometimes people would rather live this street life than get their lives together. You know, sometimes people don't have no one to turn to. Sometimes they feel like they have to live this life, but they don't understand that they don't have to live this life. They can live a much different life. But um, we're gonna swing through down here too. Down, we're gonna go down Plymouth Avenue, Plymouth and Lyle Avenue. Take a look at this neighborhood. You know, like I said, this is my neighborhood. This is where I grew up. A bunch of people ask me, man, do a video. Let us see where you grew up, Chad. Let us see what your life was like out here on the streets. So these are the streets where my life once was. And I can tell you today that I'm happy that this is no longer my life. You know, you see people standing out here in front of the store. What do you think they're doing out there? 100% they're out here selling dope. 100%. They ain't just out here hanging out. You know, you see these women walking up and down these streets. I wish I could say that they're just, you know, 
mothers on the way to the schoolhouse to pick up their kids, but they're not. They're out here trying to fuel their drug addiction. They're out here, man, living a life that no one should have to live, right? And sometimes people just turn to, the, turn to this stuff, man. This is what they want. This is what they want to do. You can see this park right here. When I was a little kid, I used to live on, in a house when I was three, four, five years old over here with my parents, with my mom. And this park right here used to be a nice little park for kids. But now, you know, you see a lot of prostitutes over here getting high, people using drugs in this park. Um, you know, prostitutes bringing dates over here. And when I say dates, it's not that kind of date. You know what kind of date it is. It's definitely a date where people are paying money in exchange for sex, right? So if you call that a date, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a, just a wild, wild life. There's prostitutes all over out here. There's killings out, out here on the street, man. Out here in the streets. And sometimes I wonder, you know, every day you see someone killed and murdered out here in Rochester, New York. And I wonder what keeps people gripped to this life. What makes you want to live this life? What makes you want to be a part of this? Is it the drug addiction? Is it dudes think that they can't get out of the street, that they have to sell dope? Let me tell you something. When I say dope, I'm talking about crack, but now things are wild, right? It's a lot of fentanyl. You know, there's a lot of heroin, a lot of fentanyl. But I'm referring to crack. When I was out here, everybody was, you know, not everybody, but a large, Part of the population was smoking crack cocaine so my whole focus is man i don't ever want to live like this anymore i don't want to be out here no more man and you know i hope that people could wise up and say man this really ain't the life i want to live like i was saying they're selling drugs for what what dream are they chasing are they chasing a real dream are they chasing you know a fake dream how many drug dealers you know really got money well i know plenty of drug dealers that are out here selling dope they got a nice little car and some clothes and that's it. They don't got nothing else. They're living with their baby's mom. They got three or four kids that they really can't take care of. Every once in a while, man, they make a couple dollars and they might go buy them some Jordans. They might go buy them, you know, nice little coat, whatever. But at the end of the day, what do they really got? What do, you, what do they have to show for their money? They got nothing, man. And then, you know what ends up happening, right? They end up in that federal building. They end up in federal district court. They end up in New York state court. And now they're serving a bunch of time and they don't even have money for commissary. They're looking for, you know, their baby's mother to send them some money, their mother. They're begging people on the phone. That's what this life brings you, man. When you're out here getting money, you think you're doing your thing. That's what this life gets you. And everybody out here selling dope is um, pretty much, man, they got a weapon, man. They got a gun on them, man. So it is a dog eat dog world. This is Locust Street right here, right? Used to hang out over here. Man, one of my good friends used to live at this house right here. I'm gonna show you the house that he lived in. It's 18 Locust Street. And look at this house, man. It's, it's just totally destroyed. But let me tell you, let me tell you what else happened over here, right? Recently, within the last two months, that good friend that I'm talking about, his sister Susie, she was drug addicted, she was prostituting, had a child at a very young age. Um, they found her dead in there. And they say that her kid's father beat her in the head with a rock. Beat her in the head with a rock, killed her. She's dead. But you know, that's a regular thing in this neighborhood. I'm gonna take you down another street. This is you know, a street that I hung out on, man, when I was eight, nine, 10 years old. Was it dangerous? It was a little bit wild, but it was never as dangerous as it is now. Now it's a whole lot more dangerous. Now, you know, people will shoot you in the middle of the day and could care less. They don't care that there's cameras on the telephone poles. They're out here selling dope. There's cameras watching them sell dope. They don't care. I think they put the cameras here as a deterrent. You know, the cameras happened while I was in prison. Look, someone died here. You see that tree? You know, it's just a little memorial that they put on around these places, man. And I'm gonna take you to another memorial around the corner where a kid was murdered out here, shot and killed. But you know, dudes don't even care, man. And I feel like they put a camera out here as a deterrent, but really the deterrent is what? It's doing nothing. They put it out here, it didn't work out. And you know, the only time when these cameras really come up, they're not busting people for drug sales on the camera. They got too much other 
serious stuff going on around here to be doing that, right? So the only time the cameras come out or the tapes come out is when, you know, someone gets shot or someone gets killed. And, you know, they come out when they're getting ready to prosecute you in Monroe County Court. They come out when they're trying to give you a life sentence, 25 to life. That means you're going to see the parole board in 25 years. And what do you think the parole board is going to do for you? They're going to bang you, man. The parole board is going to bang you. You're going to do about 30 years on that if you're doing the right thing in prison. You do about 30 years and then you can get out of prison. Think about that. You're 25 years old and you're going to get out. Now you're going to get out of prison when you're when you're 30. This is another thing that we got going on here, right? Everybody's got a dirt bike. Everybody's got a mini bike. Look at this guy. He don't even care that there's a bus there. Drove right through the bus. He's on his little mini bike. There's little kids getting off. The dude could care less. He don't care about that bus stop. He don't care about these little kids crossing the street. Why would he? Why would he stop, right? And that's the number one problem, man. Character education. Character education. Who's teaching these kids, man? Who's gonna keep these kids out in the street, man? But anyway, you know, I just seen that dude, man. He, he's probably a blood, right? So I just wanted to see what his reaction was. So I put the little blood sign up. What did he do? He responds. He responds with the blood sign. You know, we talk about that stuff all the time on our channel, how these grown men are in gangs, right? How can you be a father to your son when you can't act like an adult, man? And I did that as an example to show people. And here, here's another memorial someone killed, man. Another young man lost his life right here. Shot. Shot and killed, man. You know, really, these aren't Christmas decorations. That's not what these are. These are decorations memorializing one of their old homeboys. No one's tore that stuff down. The kid got killed a while ago, but no one tore that stuff down. So it's just gonna sit up there until it just deteriorates, I guess, right? Kind of like this whole neighborhood, man. This whole neighborhood's deteriorating. This whole neighborhood is really, I guess you could call it a, um, a concrete jungle. It's not the place for anybody, man. It's not the place for kids to be growing up. You know, little kids are out here seeing prostitutes turn tricks. I mean, they're doing it in the broad daylight out in front of people's houses, raping cars. You know, earlier I interviewed a prostitute and she told us she was HIV positive and there's all kinds of men that come to see her that are married. Some of them want to have sex with her without condoms, she said. I mean, tell me that ain't wild, right? And I asked her, I said, do you tell people you know, that you're HIV positive? She says, no, I don't tell them because I know I can't give it to other people because it's undetected. I don't know about you, but I'm not a doctor. And I don't know how all that stuff goes anymore, right? Things have changed, but, you know, I just think that it's wild, right? I mean, if she tells the dude, yeah, hey, I got HIV, of course the guy ain't gonna date her, right? He's gonna look to date someone else. He's gonna pass by her but she doesn't tell them. And now maybe them people are gonna take something home to their families, take something home to their wives. You know, some of these people got kids at home, man. But yet this is the life that they choose. They choose to come out here in the hood, man, in the ghetto.